Hello everyone, my name is Amy Pankow. Welcome to Creative Paper Canvas. Today I'd like to share with you a card which was my first effort at intentionally using mixed media to design a card. Now you've probably used mixed media before and in fact so have I. And the definition of using mixed media is just using more than one media to create your card, such as stamping and embossing paste, um, or even as simple as stamping and embossing powder. First, I'd like to share with you the stamps and supplies I'm going to use. So I'm using Altenew's Birthday Builder, Altenew's Baroque Motifs, and I'm using the large stamp, Altenew's Woven Stencil, and Altenew's Pen Sketched Flowers, and I'm using this flower stamp right here, and the matching die for that flower. Now most of the stamps on this flower set come with a matching die. I'm using Altenew's Watercolor Brush Markers, the Tropical Fiesta set. The two colors I'm using from this set are Turquoise and Desert Night. I'm also using Metallic Silver from another one of the watercolor brush marker set. I'm using Copic Marker Y11, Y15, G40, and G43. And I'm using an embossing paste. I happen to pick up the shimmery white embossing paste that I have. I'm using some pigment reinker for a craft white ink and some black matte dots. So I'm going to put a small amount of turquoise and desert night watercolor brush markers. These are very pigmented markers so you don't need a lot for this and actually probably what I put down is more than I truly needed. And then the contrasting darker color, which is the Desert Night, we really just need a little bit. If you put too much, or if you put the Desert Night in spots all around the lighter color, they're all just going to blend together and you won't get the definition of color that you want. Now you can see that I have put this on a clear mat, and I'm sorry about the reflection that you get with this from my light source. But I took a water bottle and I very liberally sprayed the ink that is down on this uh, piece of plastic and then dabbed it in and what you're going to do is take a heat gun then and dry it and you want to dry it as best you can between layers so that you get a very layered look for your final product and you'll see this as we move along. So one thing I'll caution you about using the heat gun, um, I am holding this and I typically don't hold things because these heat guns get very hot, but I'm not putting a lot of heat in any one place because this dries pretty quickly. But you can also burn your paper when you're using a heat gun and if you've ever done that you know exactly what I mean. So just be cautious of that. You want to heat from the back side and you want to heat to move the ink around as well. Now once I get this as dry as I want it, I'm going to re-dip it in the ink. Part of the purpose of this is to cover the whole piece of paper, and part is to get an image of layering inks. And I think you'll see this as I dry here. And this is something that I haven't really done before, and one of the things that I was surprised about with using mixed media was how you can create an image without having to spend a lot of time worrying about what the end result is going to be. So you can see that there's no way I could repeat and make another panel look exactly like this one and this is one of the freedoms of using mixed media art form. I am typically a relatively neat stamper and there was a time that that would have meant that my <laughs> workspace was neat as well as my stamping being neat. It was very intentional. Things were where I wanted to put them. Um, my workstation is not as neat as it used to be. 
um, my sister stamps as well and she uh, is a very free stamper and she will leave things lying around and in front of her and all around her and when we would stamp together early in our stamping career that would just make me crazy and uh, she chuckles some now that I am much more like her and leave things all over the place. So one of the things I really enjoyed about this mixed media experiment of mine uh, was the freedom to not care as much about making sure that everything I stamped was in its place. So you can see here we're getting to the end of the page and certainly there's a point that you just have to stop because you can overdo it. Now if you have much ink left I highly recommend that you take another piece of paper and use that ink up and if you don't have enough left over to create the whole panel, then put a post-it note on it of the colors that you used and go back when you want to use that panel and finish creating the panel. Next I'm going to stamp the large image from the Barique Motif stamp set onto our card panel. Now the card panel is a little warped, so I'm using the Misty to be sure that the ink gets evenly spread from the image. I also like to use the Misty when I'm stamping large images such as this to be sure that the ink um, gets stamped evenly and the Misty certainly helps you do that. I'm stamping the image with Memento Black ink. I like using Memento Black ink because I do a lot of coloring with Copic markers and I know this is a compatible ink and so instead of having multiple black inks around my craft table, I tend to go directly to this black ink. Okay, it looks like the image is completely stamped. I am using a Lawn Fawn pigment reinker, white pigment reinker, to spatter some white on my image. There are many tools you can use to spatter with. You can use a toothbrush or a paintbrush. I love my Tim Holtz spatter brush. It has stiff plastic bristles and they wash completely. And if any of you have used a white pigment ink, you know it tends to stain permanently, certainly on your uh, rubber, red rubber stamps, but it completely washes off the spatter brush. So this is the only thing I use these days to spatter with. I decided I wanted a few more spots of definition of the white, so I'm just dabbing the end of the brush randomly around the card panel until I'm happy with the results. Pick me ink takes a while to dry, so if you don't want to set your card panel aside and wait to complete your project, you can use a heat gun as I have here. I'm going to use Versamark sticky ink and white embossing powder to stamp my sentiment in the left upper corner of my card panel. Most of the happy and the birthday words that come in the birthday builder are separate words. An easy way to line up these words or any stamp that you need lined up evenly is to use the grid lines on the paper of your Misty and line them up along one of the lines and when you take your block to pick up the words, line the edge of the block up along one of the grid lines as well so that you know when you stamp your image you are going to be straight on the paper and not a little crooked. Be sure to use your embossing buddy before you stamp with your uh, Versamark sticky ink. And the embossing buddy helps to prevent your card panel from picking up extra embossing powder from static or from moisture that will then inadvertently get heat set into your project once you heat set your embossing powder. So I pulled in my plastic sheet for the next step and once again I apologize for the reflective light that you see there. I am mixing the embossing paste with metallic silver from the Altenew watercolor brush markers Winter Wonderland set. And I'm just using my um, spatula here to mix it up until it's completely mixed. And I'm going to use Altenew's woven stencil 
to put some of the embossing paste down on the panel that we're working on. Now at this point our panel is fairly warped and so I've used some low tack tape to both tape down the um, panel that we're creating as well as the embossing folder so nothing moves around. And as you can see I'm not putting paste everywhere, I'm just kind of applying it randomly until I'm happy with the results. Now when I pick up the stencil you're going to notice along the left edge of the card that some of the embossing paste leaked under the stencil onto the card panel. If this was not a mixed media project I think I would have been very unhappy with that and felt like I needed to start over but being mixed media it just adds to the texture and um, uniqueness of the card. I am stamping the flower image I chose from pen sketched flowers onto a piece of Nina White cardstock and I'm going to use the die to cut this out. I'm going to use low tack tape once again to attach the die to the image. Secure the die in several places so that you don't get shifting or movement of the die when you run it through your embossing machine. So now that our image is cut, um, it's time to color. And when you see me color here, you're going to see I am very casual about this. I am going to fully color in the stems, but the flowers and the greenery on the flowers, I am not going to completely cover. I'm going to use the lighter color. So for the flower, it will be the Y11, and for the greenery, it will be the G40. I'm going to use the lighter color to uh, put some color down in the center of each section of the image and leave the edges of the image white. And then I'm going to use the darker of the two colors. So for the flower, it will be the Y15, and for the greenery, it will be the G43 to then highlight some shading and the center of the images. In this particular stamp, the stamp has uh, stamp lines where there is some shading and uh, I just put some color over that shading area to accentuate what the stamp has indicated are the shaded parts. I'm going to heat set the embossing paste that is on the card panel. When you heat set embossing paste, it bubbles a little bit. It becomes a rougher texture. Uh, typically, if you leave it to air dry for 24 hours, it will have a smoother texture, and the heat setting changes that. And it's, a, it's an interesting process. I like the texture, so you can give it a try and see if that's something that you like as well. And I'm just going to heat the front and the back of the panel to be sure that the embossing paste is fully dry before we move on to the next part of the card. So this panel is warped and somewhat stiff from the number of times that it has been heat set in this process. So I'm putting a fair amount of glue on here so that when we attach it to the piece of black cardstock it will stay attached and stick and uh, lay flat. I'm going to put a heavy block over the top of this and leave it for several minutes until the glue sets. And then glue it to the card base as well. And once again, I'm going to put the heavy block on the top of this to help to allow the glue to set. I have put foam tape on the back of the flower image and attached it to the right edge of the card as you can see here. And the final steps are to put some of the black matte dots on the front of the card. I've mentioned this before but I think it's worth saying again these um, dots and embellishments often come with glue on the back but I highly recommend using a liquid glue to attach them in place. The glue that they come with is not typically adequate to permanently hold it to the face of the card. So here is the final card. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned as much as I did in the process of creating this card. This is not my typical design style and I had a lot of fun getting a little messy and stepping outside the box. I encourage you to give it a try. Thank you for joining me today at Creative Paper Canvas. My name is Amy Panka. You can follow me at creativepapercanvas.com. I hope you have a great day.